What's up, Wargamers? We've got another episode for you today, and this is some news out of Forge World, some beta test rules for the large Telamon Dread Knight. This is for the Legio Custodes, if you play Horus Heresy, but these are 40k rules, so you can use them as a limited option in your Adeptus Custodes. Uh, keep in mind that these are just beta rules, and we're going to take a look at them for the first time. I have actually not read these rules yet, so you're going to get my first reaction. And you might be wondering to yourself, why are we talking about some obscure beta rules? Well, if you paid attention, we've seen some test beta rules for these nice dreadnoughts. These are half painted. Woo! My left is your right. So we've got the special rules for the Gladius dreadnought. The one, this is the one that I uh, had to build another one because I glued my shield on sideways and uh, couldn't break the super glue bond. So I got the base colors on that guy. And then we've got special rules for the other dreadnought that has the uh, last cannon power weapon. And I did him in a slightly different scheme or started him in a slightly different scheme uh, with a little bit more black rather than so much of the uh, gold. But now we've got special rules for the big daddy. So this one is, he's not as big as an Imperial Knight. So this is the Telamon Dreadnought. This is one of the other Forge World resin dreadnoughts that you can pick up. And it's got one of these crazy blasters on it. It's got a close combat weapon, another crazy blaster, missile launcher on its back. And I've um, sprayed this guy in the Retributor Gold so far with an under, I think I did an undercoat in black and then sprayed it with Retributor Gold. But one of the things that still needs to be done on this guy is I need to paint him. So if you want me to do him and do a painting tutorial on him, like a step-by-step, -step, they're not that hard to get the base colors down and then you just kind of, uh, I don't have any of the decals for him because I didn't buy any of the decal sheets. But from there, you just kind of do your washes and your highlights and things like that. So um, they're pretty straightforward and custo custodian guard are not that hard to paint. In fact, I think they're almost easier to paint than Ultramarines, which is uh, debatable. But um, yeah, we'll definitely do another, uh, we'll do a painting episode on him. And I finally get him on a base, put him on his base or something like that. I uh, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for basing, but since I didn't do any dynamic posing on the feet, I'll probably just have to um, put him on a normal flat base or something like that. But just to give you a size comparison, this is the size of a regular Contemptor Dreadnought. So this is the Gladius Dreadnought from Forge World. And when we put the Telamon Dreadnought side by side, it feels like a weird comparison, but I'm trying to hold them at the camera with their feet at the same height. So he's like 33% larger, maybe even 50% larger in bulk, but height-wise he's about 33% larger. And he's just a beast on the battlefield. So now we're going to take a look at some special rules that were released today by Forge World. And those are here available currently on the Warhammer community website. So you can take a look there. It's the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought beta rules now available. And I'll include a link in the comments down below. So if you want to get a quick link to them and read them for yourself, we can do that. And you can just get there quick from down below. But make sure you subscribe to the channel if this is your first time watching or if you're not subscribed yet. And hit that like button if you like digital content like this on YouTube about Warhammer and other wargame hobbies. So here we go. It says... It's an awesome time to be an Adeptus Custodes player. <laughs> Agreed. With a fully-fledged codex released earlier this year, loads of units to choose from, and a recent set of beta rules allowing you to use your favorite Horus Heresy units in your games of Warhammer 40,000, you're spoilt for choice when building an army. Today you'll be able to get your hands on a fan-favorite option to join those in the first batch of beta rules, the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought. One, I think it's great that Games Workshop is doing this because it allows us to get more miles out of our Forge World units that we may already have, but also two, twofold, it's going to help them sell a hell of a lot more of these Forge World Dreadnoughts the moment that those become available in your Legio Custodius Force. And I feel like thematically, these Horus Heresy style Dreadnoughts have a much better look and feel alongside the Adeptus Custodes than the regular Contemptor plastic dreadnought that came out in the in the Horus Heresy uh, Betrayal at Kalth box game. So um, it, they're just so much more stylized than the other ones um, and they're beautiful model kits. They take a little bit more time to put together for sure because they're more intricate but they're despite the fact I didn't I didn't magnetize any of my dreadnoughts Forge World does make it so you can go in and magnetize the weapons and arms and stuff like that onto these dreadnoughts. They, if you already know the magnet size, instead of gluing the arms on here at the joints, you can go ahead and just slap magnets in there and swap your weapons out. 
which is also good because this month, ha if you decide to buy one of these, this month also happens to be free weapons month for um, for Forge World. So as you can see, this one's got two close combat weapons. Mine had one close combat weapon in the in the um, like a Gatling laser. I forget the exact weapon, but we'll find out here on the on the sheet. I haven't played with it yet. I bought it because I love the model. And I was buying two of the other Dreadnoughts anyway, so I had four of the other um, Contemptor-style Dreadnoughts now in total. Two of them assembled and primed, and or not primed, and then these two that are base, base coated at least at a base level. So um, basically the heavy Telamon Dreadnought is a beast. So there's, there's even another weapon that it could have as well. And we're going to go over its rules, but yeah, definitely check it out. It is, it is not cheap. If we go ahead and we look at Forge World... And we want to take a look at the cost of a Telemon Dreadnought. We're going to deliver it to the United States. Telemon. At 72 pounds for a Telemon Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Keep on wanting to call it a Dreadnought because it's about that size. At 72 pounds, what are you looking at there at the conversion rate? Like $125, something like that? Um, the, re the resin kit was beautiful. I, have, I don't have... There's like no flaws in this resin um because i think i got it i mean there's like a mold line i guess but i think i got it early enough like pretty much right after its release that the molds were fresh um you can oddly see maybe even some of like the thumb printing or, or 3d printing i think it's thumb printing that was in the mold or on the cast model and things like that um but i mean that's so minor that's that's really nitpicking might not even be fingerprints, but it's like slight wavy patterns. But beautiful model. I had no problems whatsoever putting that together. Unlike the shoulder pads that are on the um, other Dreadnoughts where I've cracked some of them trying to clip them out. I had, I had much better luck with my two newer ones and didn't, ended up not cracking those. But you can see here in comparison to a Space Marine how much bigger they are than a Space Marine. But let's dive into the beta rules, shall we? This is news to me here. So let me go ahead and shrink my ugly mug. I don't want to take it completely off camera because I do want to torture you guys at least a tiny bit and make you look at my face while I'm going over these rules for you. But let's go here and do a shrinky dink. There we go. Small corner. So here's the Forge World Adeptus Custodius Previews 2. So if you want to if you want to make use of these beta rules, they're, they're not official yet. They want you to provide feedback. Here's the rules on how you provide feedback and how you um, subject line your email so they can actually find it and tie it back to us. Here's the type of, there's the email address, but here's the type of feedback they're looking for. They want to know, is it OP? Should it be higher points, lower points? Does it, What are the stats like? Are the stats appropriate for the war gears? Should it get a special ability or should it not have a special ability that they deemed it? So let's get into the meat and potatoes. And here is the stat line. So at 17 power level, we don't know the points value um, right up front or do we? So 17 power level, it says points per weapon. So that's good. But what's the base points on this Telemon Dreadnought? Well, maybe we'll find out while we're looking at it, but I don't think we have. So, assuming it's got full wounds, which it starts with 15 wounds, so that's a, that's a beast of a Dreadnought. It's got a 9-inch movement, a 2-plus weapon skill, and a 2-plus ballistic skill. And if that seems overpowered to you, that's just in line with the fact that the Adeptus Custodes are the best fighters and shooters in the uh, galaxy. Um, or at least stat line wise they are and in the fluff they certainly could be and their dreadnoughts are no exception to that they don't get any worse at shooting or fighting just because of their, of their lumbering size so a big fat dreadnought is going to wreak some damage even potentially on something like an imperial knight depending on its loadout so it says a telemon heavy dreadnought is a single model uh, strength nine without a dreadnought fist Toughness 8, so it's going to be immune to some of those uh, tiny, tiny, weak weapons, which is nice. 15 wounds, 4 attacks, 10 leadership, and a 2-plus save. So, again, not odd. The 2-plus save is, is typical of the Adeptus Custodes. It's, this thing probably has an invulnerable save, too, in addition to that, if we know the Adeptus Custodes well. So the Telamon Castus is their fist, and that gives them double strength at minus 3 AP, a solid three damage per attack so that's up to 12 damage that it can have on its output and you re-roll um, wound rolls of one for attacks with this weapon which is you're, you're basically wounding everything on a two so that means you get re you're not only hitting on twos but you get re-rolls with the fist so that's beef right there and then twin plasma ejector which is the 
The okay, so that's the uh, blast weapon that's on the fist. That's an eight inch range, heavy two d six. So think of this as basically being like a twin linked plasma flamer. It's not going to be um, like a, a, a bullet shooty weapon or, or whatever. It's things just shooting a, like a, a big swath of plasma out of it. So strength seven, AP minus three, and one damage. So it's that's just like a plasma gun basically. And it says this weapon hits its target automatically. So there we go. We know it's a flame weapon. I wonder if it can be used on the defense if somebody decided to charge a dreadnought. We'll have to take a look and see if they have those rules. That would just be... Um, It'd be in line with flamers, but <laughs> you'd be thinking twice about charging this vehicle, even if you were another normal dreadnought. Um, the Spiculus Bolt Launcher at 24 inches, heavy 5, strength 5, AP minus 2, minus 1. That feels like that's the weapon on its back, that that's the, um, that's the what I call the missile launcher. I think they might technically be bolts, but that's a pretty strong weapon too, especially if you're shooting things like Marines. You're going to be wounding the Marines on threes and knocking them back to a five plus armor save. So that's tough. And then here is the uh, weapon that I've decided to outfit my Telemon Dreadnought with, which is the Arachnus Last Storm at 48 inches. Ten shots, strength seven, AP minus one, and D3 damage apiece. This thing is going to shred vehicles, uh, definitely light vehicles. It's going to rip through Terminator units, at least being able to put the wounds down on them. Um, so shooting at pretty much anything, it's it's a viable target with strength 7 and D3 damage. Uh, its AP is a little lackluster, but it's really just a heavy last gun, like a, a Gatling last gun. Now they have the other weapon that would be optional, so if you wanted to met, uh, buy the other weapon or take advantage of their buy, buy a Dreadnought get a free combat weapon, or get a free weapon, you would have the uh, you know potentially the arms to swap out here to have either two of the fists with plasma ejectors or both of the shooty weapons. And then the, uh, the Iliastis Accelerator Culvern has a 36-inch range and a heavy 6, but at strength 8, AP minus 3, and D3 damage. So that's a good trade-off. You're giving up 4 shots and some range for 1 more strength. 2 more AP is nothing to snuff at, so that's definitely going to be a strong one. Now here's the war gear options. It says a heavy Telamon Dreadnought may replace one or both of its Telamon Castius and Twin Plasma Ejectors with one of the following. So it may replace one or both. So you could make something have two of the Arachnus Last Storm weapons, which would just be wow. Um, so both a Telemon Castus and a Twin Plasma Ejector must be exchanged for a single option because they're both built into the fist, right? So they can either get the Arachnus Last Storm and or Elastus Accelerator Culvern. If you do that, um, it's saying the Twin Plasma Ejector is 60 points. So that's it for each fist. The Arachnus Last Storm is an even trade. So you get that uh, for 60 points also. The Accelerator Culvern is slightly cheaper at 45 points. And the uh, Spiculus Bolt Launcher on its back is included. So it's at no additional cost. Um, 220 points per model. I don't know why I didn't see that earlier. So that's 220 points base cost plus the cost per weapon, presumably. And then you have its melee weapon, which is... 60 points a piece, 65 points per pair. So it looks like you have to pay for the twin plasma ejector. That doesn't seem right because it, on the weapon, it's actually built into the fist. You couldn't build them with the fist without that plasma ejector um, unless they sell a different fist than what I received in mine. So let's go into the, the uh, rules. There's that invulnerable save. So in addition to having crazy toughness eight, two plus armor save, it's got a four plus invulnerable save from its reinforced automatic automantic barriers uh, here's the spiculous volley so this is based on the uh, bolt launcher on its back it says if this model remains stationary during its movement phase it can shoot its spiculous bolt launcher twice in the following shooting phase Ooh, dang so you're gonna be firing heavy 10 out of this thing here this really just makes this whole thing a firestorm base and it is a lot of points being that it looks like you're gonna be camping out at about 300 plus points but it's going to be putting out some damage for sure. And this is all beta rules. So we don't know if it's going to be dumbed down, if the points are going to be changed, whatever the case may be. Um, we don't know. Here's Unyielding Agent. So this is in addition to its armor save or its invulnerable save. We roll a d6 each time it loses a wound. And on a 6, it ignores the wound that's lost. So again, it's got the 6 plus ability to basically feel no pain after that. And then the Automantic Cascade. So this is 
probably a really bad blow up, but if this model is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield. Only on a six, it explodes, and each unit within six inches suffers d6 mortal wounds. So don't be nearby if you're going to uh, be there when the final wound goes off. But it is a one in six chance, so it's not likely to actually blow up. But when and, when and if it does, it's going to go up like the grand finale at a fireworks show. So comment below what your thoughts are on this bad boy. I'm interested to see if a lot of people are digging the stats on this model. Yeah, I think it's an obscure model that a lot of players probably don't have their hands on yet. But I highly recommend, if you're into playing Adeptus Custodes, definitely get your hands on the Gladius Dreadnought and the other Dreadnought. And then get your hands on the Telamon because this means that these Forge World models are now going to become not just chapter approved, but they're going to actually get uh, 40k rules that allow you to play them in the new 8th edition 40k rather than just in the Horus Heresy game set. So talk to you guys soon. This has been another video from Budget Wargamer.